My name is Michael Phillips with Rendition. What I wanted to do today was take you through a side-by-side -side comparison of the FEP Quest and the Dynasty Shocker. And I wanted to just kind of take you through the guns from front to back and uh, do a side-by-side -side comparison between these two guns. Uh, the first thing I want to start with is obviously the OEM barrel that comes with it. Both guns are actually tied in this category. FEP Quest comes with a nice 14-inch barrel. Uh, whether you get a private label or a stock smart parts shocker the nxts are now coming with a 693 back um, both barrels are very good barrels so these guns are tied in this category um, that's about as far as they're going to go in terms of being tied now in terms of the feed neck on an fep quest you get a very nice clamping feed neck on the private label shockers you will get a q-lock feed neck if you get a stock nxt shocker you will get a junk feed neck. It's basically a throwaway. You have to remove it off of your gun and go out and buy a $40 Q-Lock or a different type of feed neck for your NXT Shocker. Regulators. Uh, the FEP Quest is going to come with a low pressure regulator and a high pressure regulator. Very similar to an Intimidator. Uh, you can take these apart at your workbench and service them very quickly. They just unscrew, take everything out and lube it. The NXT Shocker comes with an ion reg. Uh, the only way to take apart an ion reg and service it is you need a deep well socket in order to take that apart. Uh, the regs are not really complicated, but they're kind of weird because things are or, um, reverse threaded. And uh, they're definitely a lot harder to take apart an ion reg than it is to take apart the FEP reg, which is very similar to an Intimidator. Um, the next thing I want to go through are the eyes. Now on an FEP Quest, the eyes that come with it are very similar to the Intimidator eyes or the eyes that are found on a die. Um, very, you know, proven design. On the NXT paintball gun, the eyes that come with it are basically the ribbon design. The same design that you see on the, um, the, the old nerves, uh, the old shockers. Now the new NXT does come with brake beam eyes, but they're attached to that ribbon. It's not eye wires like what you would see uh, inside of a Quest or an Intimidator or a die. Um, they're very easy to break on the NXT, um, but definitely the eye advantage is going to go to the Quest. Now the next uh, point here that we're going to make is about the stock triggers that come with the gun. Okay, On a Quest you're going to get a trigger design that is very similar to a Critical or a, a Techna Sith. The uh, pivot is where it should be, behind the trigger, not in front of it like on a Shocker. The pivot is behind it, which is very similar to the ultralight frames, also very similar to the Intimidator. Um, on the Shockers, the reason why in semi-auto these guns are very hard to get up to a high rate of fire is because the pivot is in front of the trigger, not behind it. If you think your hand, when you're shooting a paintball gun, your hand is actually cocked down at a 45 degree angle because when you're holding your bottle. So if you think that if your hand's down at a 45 degree angle, it makes sense that the plane that your fingers are going to be pulling the trigger on are going to be at a 45 degree angle to the frame. That's why with the shocker pivot being in front of the trigger instead of behind it, your rate of fire, especially in semi-auto, is not going to be as fast. Um, the geometry on a smart parts shocker trigger is completely wrong. It's backwards. Now here's where an FEP Quest just completely leaves a shocker in the dust. The FEP Quest comes with a Wicked Air sports board. Um, comes with everything you need. You can adjust your dwell, your ball in place, debounce. It comes with three different firing modes. The NXL, PSP, three shot, semi-auto, uh, very easy to adjust your rate of fire cap, eye power, you name it, the WAS board has it. It's almost everything you would see on a Tadeo or a Virtue board other than some of the cheater modes. The WAS board is proven technology. On a shocker board, you get the same uh, nerve board, the cricket board. Um, you basically have three adjustments. You have rebound, dwell, and recharge, and that is it. If you want to calculate your rate of fire when using a nerve board, you need a scientific calculator because it is a nightmare to actually calculate what your rate of fire is. Um, now when it comes down to efficiency, you're going to have to stick with me on this comparison because the Quest is actually more efficient than the Shocker, and let me explain to you why. A shocker operates at 200 psi at 12 milliseconds of dwell. Um, the 200 psi that goes into the gun not only propels the ball out the barrel, but also cycles the bolt as well. 
So you have 200 PSI at 12 milliseconds of dwell to cycle the gun and 200 PSI to propel the ball. On a Quest, you're, you have a low pressure regulator which actually only operates at about 80 PSI. And your board, it only takes 8 milliseconds of dwell to cycle your bolt. So 8 milliseconds of dwell at 80 PSI and 200 PSI to propel the ball out. So you have less open, uh, less open solenoid time and less air pressure to cycle the bolt in the Quest as opposed to long cycle time, high pressure on the Shocker. So you will get more efficiency out of a Quest. I find that on my Shocker, I get about 1,100 shots. On a 6845, on my Quest, I get approximately 14 to 1,500 shots. Definitely much more, and it definitely comes down to the lower pressure that it takes to cycle the gun and also the lower dwell time that it takes to cycle the Quest. Um, I've shot about 10 cases through each one of these guns, and let me tell you what, the Quest has the Shocker beat hands down across the board. Thank you.